Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in this big, beautiful world and big, beautiful and messy world. I hope you're in a space of goodness. I am Carol C.C. Miller, your positive life strategist, peace activator and global hugger coming to you with another episode of Embrace Your Life Chat, where the intention is to heighten celebrations and lessen sorrows through a positive focus. As you can tell, I have a guest today and I will introduce her in just a second. I do like to go over a couple of things beforehand and they're really not as important for today's conversation, but I still like to go over them. And one is I'm not an absolutist. I'm not a big fan of always, never, right, wrong, good or bad. There are 7 billion people on this planet. You can't begin to say what is always right for them. So I work on a scale of zero to 100, zero being always negative, 100 being always positive. I don't know anybody at zero and I don't know anybody at the 100. I do know people who are closer to those. My personal work that I work on, and I've been working on this for years, is to be in the 90% of the time loving, kind, compassionate, peaceful, and positive because those are my top values. What does that mean? I'm not always that. I'm not always kind. I'm not always positive. I'm not always loving, compassionate, and peaceful. So I feel what I need to feel. Then I move forward to feeling what I want to feel and how I want to show up in this world. Secondly, I'm a coach. I love supporting people and living their best life, whatever that looks like. I am not a counselor, nor am I a therapist. And sometimes to live that best life requires, I shouldn't say requires, but it might be helpful to get counseling or therapy. I believe you're worthy of living your best life. So whatever support system works for you, I encourage you to build that for yourself and to be that support for others too. But today, hello, I'm going to get your name right one of these times uh, from South Africa, Bis Biswe'i. And hi, Michelle. Good to have you here. So if you have pet questions, I'm going to be introducing Shauna here. It's our monthly chat because even though like my work is around positivity and coaching, our animals are, if we have them right now, I am animalless, but they are a big part of our lives. So knowing that they are feeling good and they're feeling supported and comforted or if we've just lost one one of my um, coaching clients is just um, is now going through the grief of losing the pet so it really is part of who we are and it's part of our our enjoying our lives whether our pets are happy and safe and secure so Shauna, welcome as always, and let everybody know a little bit about you and where you're joining us from. I'm Chicago, so again, let us know where you're joining us from as well. Hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here. I love this. Like This is like my favorite Thursday morning. So uh, my name is Shauna Marie Fisher. I am an animal communicator in Vancouver, Washington. So yes, there is Vancouver, Washington and Vancouver, Canada, right? How amazing is that? So I'm kind of by the, the Portland, Oregon area, just to give people um, a landmark. And I work with people on Zoom, over the phone, or in person, of course, if they live near me, right? So um, yeah, so that's what I do, help people with getting more clarity from their pets. Like, hey, why is my pet doing this certain thing? Or what's what's going on? And I help with end of life stuff too, say, or after a pet passes, because that's so hard, right? Yeah. It's so hard. They're such a part of our lives, right? Yeah. I didn't know you prior to my Meeks passing, or I absolutely would have used you. But what are some stories, like what are what is the most interesting pet you've done an, an animal communication with? Oh, oh my gosh, so I just had one recently. It was really cool. It was, yeah, it was actually last week. I had a animal communication session with a bull snake. It was really- what? <laughs> yeah, with a, with a snake, it was really, really cool. And it was really interesting. So this snake had lots of insights to share. But what was really cool is the snake had a certain way that they liked their mice that I had to convey to their, their people. And it was like, I was like, okay, I was like, how do I share this? It was like very, 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 very interesting. <laughs> so I was like, okay. I'm like, all right. So yeah, so it was it was very interesting. It was it was a really cool. It was a it was a fun session. I liked the insights from the snake. It was really nice. I say ended the I guess the snake pet owner um, like it as well. Yeah, and they were really receptive. They're like, oh yeah, we can figure that out. So I'm like, okay. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other animals that outside of your normal dog cat? 
uh, I'm like a hamster. I communicated with a hamster before and then horses. And then I actually did communicate with a bird. I, wonder, I forget what kind of bird this was that I communicated with, but I did um, communicate with a bird too. So yeah. Very cool. And then do you ever like just the wild animals outside of your place? Can you pick up on what's going on with them or do they yes. like try to chat with you or how, how does that work with wild animals? Yeah, you can absolutely pick up on stuff from them too, right? They, they're kind of like what I like to call our way showers, right? They help us to kind of navigate things and they can show up to be like, hey, I'm helping you with this or I want to bring this awareness to you or that, right? They're really good with that. I love the crows and the squirrels. Those are the ones I probably see the most. And then of course, like butterflies and dragonflies, but I really love the cr the crows and the squirrels. Those, those, those ones really speak to me. <laughs> and have you gone to zoos and can pick up? Because sometimes you hear like, there are zoos out there that I don't feel do a, a great job. And then there are zoos that I feel like are doing the best they can to preserve, educate, and all those kinds of things. But can you pick up on the animals? Like, are they happy there, wanting out? Yeah, and I love that question. That's such a great question. So I might, you know, kind of think a little bit differently than some people do with that because of how I feel you know, when I've been into a zoo and you tune into the animals there is they like to be our teachers there, right? So they like to know and, and be reminded that, hey, where are, where are your teachers? And they like to be acknowledged for that. Um, and then also to, they like us to just be in the moment with them, right? And not try to like capture too many pictures with our phone, right? Because there's so many people that's like, it's great to take pictures there, right? But it's, you know, sometimes when I've been to the zoo and I've seen people take pictures, they're like, hey, 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 come on, just enjoy us for the moment that you're yeah. here with us, don't take away from the moment, right? So a lot of times that's a, a big message that I get is like, hey, you're missing out by by trying to capture it with your phone because that's not gonna have the same energy afterwards, right? That's the, the biggest message I get from them is just to enjoy us and try to, you know, be be respectful of our space, even though we are in that, like, as I go like this, in that enclosed area, still be respectful and mindful of our space. Because sometimes, you know, you see people try to, like, run up and get too close and it just, and just be kind of not respectful of their space. So I feel like they like that, even though they are enclosed, but just to be like, hey, honor that barrier, right? Yeah. I love seeing the ones where you'll catch videos of, like, beluga whales or something. So the young kid is right next to it and then beluga whales following their finger or something like that. I love seeing those connections. Yeah, yeah. see, that's cool because then you're having like fun and being in the joy. Yeah. And they like that energy. They just don't like like the abrupt energy, but the fun and the joy they really love. And that's just from my personal experience, you know, what I found, you know, and even the, the dolphins in captivity too, they want to, you know, teach us and they like, you know, being... The, the connection with that human and and showing us happy and joy they like they like to amplify that yeah i love that and juliana has joined us so welcome juliana Hi. and again i see uh, michelle has a question we'll get to it in a second so if other people have questions about their pets living or pass over on the rainbow bridge put them in comments name of the pet living or dead is helpful it doesn't ha oh hi jennifer it's good to see you here it's not um, necessary, but the name of the pet, if they're living or dead, is helpful for Shauna to make that connection. My next question is, and again, I have worked with many psychic mediums in the human world, mm -hmm. and not always, but every now and then they have somebody, that they, they just simply can't read psychically or can't connect with from the other realm. Do you ever have, are there animals that have crossed the rainbow bridge that you just simply can't connect with or an animal who is here that for whatever reason you just can't read it's like just closed off does that ever happen I've had that happen from time to time and then sometimes it's you know can be based on the people's energy too and then sometimes um they just really maybe don't have too much that they want to share sometimes some animals go deeper than other animals right so sometimes they're like hey i just want to share this or i just want to share that so sometimes it's based on kind of 
their people's perceptions of things too. So if the people are closed off, then they're going to be closed off as well too. So that's, that's when I tend to kind of find that the most, right? So. Oh, that makes sense. Cause I was thinking that they might be a little bit more of an open conduit just because they are so closer, whether they're here or the other side, they're just pure energy as it is. So I thought maybe that doesn't happen, but it totally makes sense. Especially if, if I am booking a session with you and I am totally worried about my dog passing or she has just passed. So now I am really um, grieving about it. If the connection is a little foggy kind of thing to be able to pick up on. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It can be sometimes in that way. Absolutely. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I love okay. that question. Well, we got some questions coming in here before I ask Shauna to start ask, answering them. If I miss one, because sometimes I don't see them, please put them in comments again if I haven't answered yours and we're getting ready to um, stop shop, because also there's sometimes that I just don't see them. The system I use seems to hide some until I come back later in the day. So um, let me go up here. I know Michelle had one first. Let me turn off my phone. I know, right? I always forget that. I'm like, wait, did I turn my <laughs> ringer off? Okay, I did. Uh, so, um, so with Michelle, so the first thing that comes to me with Kaya is Kaya says that what you, that what she loves about you is that you help to like embrace her curiosity, that you always give her fun things. You always give her fun things and that you're totally enamored by her or as she is with you and that you just like give in to all her desires and that you just do everything for her. Kai is like, she'll give in to me always. I love that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Juliana is... Maxi, tap into Maxi. I, th I think she asked something else specifically, but now I don't see it. I know it's weird how the questions do that. So what Maxi is showing me, he's having me like literally, like shake my hands like this. He's like just like shake it off, shake it out off, and like help to keep my um energy clear and do some like work with my head. Like maybe put your hand right here on my head like this, just to kind of just to help to help to keep me calm and relaxed is what it, and and while i have fun but help to keep me calm and relaxed and centered is what um is what i get from mr maxi so because i know he's got some stuff going on so yeah okay so juliana let us know if that rings true for you now lisa is bailey the past watching over us is he okay or sad well he says, a lot of love lisa yeah, so much love, Lisa. So um, he says that he is watching over. He says he says he's watching over, and then he says uh, sometimes he's like he's like he's giving me like a face like this. Like he kind of used to put his um, head on his paws like this. He says sometimes he looks at he's like ah. he's like oh I loved that time or I loved that time or I love spending that time with like one of the things that he's watching you do. He says that. Um, he says that he miss. He's glad that he can look over that, but he misses being a part of that. So he says sometimes he's like, "Oh, I remember that." So he wants you to those special times. So he wants you to think of him when you're doing those special things and those special times that you used to have with him. He says, Aww. "Yeah." And Dora, if you could let us know you you mentioning your grand dog Rupert Winston, but what's your question about Rupert? Um, Jennifer, could you please help? Me with George, my little boy, li living, but so, so scared of storms. Fireworks did not help. How can I help him with his trauma? Oh, so much love, uh, Jennifer. That's such a hard thing, right? Because they're they're so sensitive with that, right? And she so says he he's says, a mama's boy. <laughs> yes, right? He's like, I'm a mama's boy, definitely. He says that I'm giving him like a comfy little fort will help. So he's showing me like a little kind of like a little dog fort. They have those little like dog houses. That's like an inside kind of like dog canopy and like a little place that he can go have comfort where the sound is drowned out so maybe like a tv on or some music he says like that quiet place that's away from that noise um he says that really would help him a lot he's like they should, they should make soundproof little kennels for animals that are afraid of storms yeah. 
that would be amazing. Yeah, because they're so sensitive. That they do have like the thunder shirts and stuff like that. And when I asked him about that, he's like, nope. He's like, no, thank you. He's like, I don't want that. Um, but they have all other kinds of uh, Thunderworks who makes the thunder shirts has uh, like calming uh, sprays and calming drops too. And then there's Bach Rescue Remedy for pets too. And then there's Composure. They have liquid and treats that can help um calm them during the times and you can also get stuff from your vet too but that can be hard because you don't always know when a storm is going to come right or when somebody's going to let off a firework so he says just make sure he always knows his like comfort little place that he has he says that's what's important he's like his little fort he says he's my little fort <laughs> i wish this allowed me to have people post pictures because i'm like now i want to see everybody's too. dog <laughs> Me too. That would be so fun, right? Karen. Hi, Shauna. Could you try to connect with my dog, Lucy, living and see what's up? She has shifted a little bit, and I'm not sure if it's anything is wrong. She says that she feels your, um, what she's showing me is I feel your apprehension right now about some things that are shifting and changing for you. So she says, I feel that. So she's like, we need to get out of our space more to kind of help get things clear. So she's showing me, like, let's go out and sit in the grass or, like, let's go sit out and go for a walk. And that will help, too, because she says I'm picking up on on, uh, on your stuff. So she's like, let's just brush it off and shake it off. She's like, let's just brush it off and shake it off is what she says. Let's know, Karen, if that makes sense to you. And, again, if you have a follow-up question, these that – Shauna is doing are just short little feed-ins. You do 30 minute and 45 minute readings if if you want something more in depth about it. Yeah. Patty, I'm worried about my dog Opal's health, but she can't tell me what, if anything, is wrong. Patty, don't we all wish our dogs could tell us what is wrong? It would make life so much easier. But that's why we have Shauna. Shauna, Opal. What's going on with Opal? Oh, so right when I tune into Opal, she's having me touch my shoulders here. So like my shoulders and my, like right below my neck, kind of on my, um, like right where my cervical um, vertebrae is, like the kind of like through my cervical verte vertebrae right to my thoracic vertebrae on my back. Um, is, is she's like very specific. That's where she's showing me is bothering me. So like my neck and shoulders, there's tension in like the front part of my body. So if you could help give me movement in the front part of my body, maybe doing some like acupuncture or like massage and some stretching with the, with the front part of my body will really help because it's like there's something like energetically kind of and in, and. In, and unbalanced in the front part of my body is what I get. For and you do energy work on dogs, right? I do. Yeah. And I do that. And in, in a distance, so from a distance, sorry, from a distance, I do that. So, um, yeah. And I actually have actually done it with people on zoom. So when they're on zoom with me, as I do the energy healing and, and, or usually I just do it and then I call them or follow up with them on zoom with what I pick up on during the energy healing session. Got it. And so her website is shawnamariefisher.com to find out more information on that. Um, Amy, what do you feel about Hooper? Amy, can you tell us if Hooper is here or gone? And hi, Jenny Rose. Good to have you here. Thanks. Oh, for I Sorry. see. She says, how can I help um, Hooper? So what I get with Hooper is show me how to like, let's have fun together. Let's have fun. Hooper says that can help. That can help. Like, let's have fun. Let's do all these different things and these different, like, stimulus activities. Um, is that's what I get. It's going to help with Hooper. Hooper's like, come on, let's have fun. Let's have fun. Let's have fun. Let's show fun together. Let's show fun together is what I get from, from Hooper. I love it. And I want to see a picture of Hooper. I know, me too. I wonder if that's Hooper in her profile picture is what I was kind of. Oh, I bet it is. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, Hooper is a puppy. Yeah. So that makes sense because Hooper is like fun, fun, fun. Like get me doing different stuff, different stuff too. And, and always like laugh and have fun with me too. Be like, okay, Hooper, come on, come on, come on. Like keep me, uh, keep me going is what, is what I get with Hooper. So Hooper is like, I am just, uh, like I want like more toys, more toys. Like he's showing me like a trash can basket. Full of toys. He's like, give me toys, give me toys, give me toys. I love it. Okay, Jenny Rose here. Shauna, can you please check into my dog Taylor? 
She's been releasing a lot over the last week. She's my right hand girl. Aww. Aww. You know what's interesting is she's having me put my right hand in my left hand like this. So she says, she says, release with me. She says, release with me. And she's having me like want to close my eyes. So she says, help to, um, she says, help to, help to release with me too. And then she says, I need some like different stuff with food. She says some different, um, some different stuff with food too, to give me like a little pick me up, like that one, like kind of smooth kind of treat that I've had in my food. Um, I would really, really like that. And that would really help me to feel better. She says too. So awesome. Let's see here, Dora. Um, Rupert is sweet with the family, yet such a guard dog with other people or dogs. He had a lot of, he had a lot of social, the speak, Carol. He had a lot of socialization. What's up with him now? Doris, can you say how old he is? Because I'm wondering if it's going from puppy to adult where they're taking on a new personality. Oh, she has another part of the comment. She says, oh. Rupert's anxiety on why a friendly, sweet dog became very antisocial with strangers and other dogs. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what he's showing me is he says, uh, he says, oh, and Rupert's too, Rupert's too. So he says like, he's showing me that he's like, he's having me go like this. He's like, so I mean, it's like weird making this like sound with tapping my chest because he's like, okay, I need stuff to help release my anxiety. So he's showing me like, let's go for like a long walk, like, or let's go for like a long run in the backyard and do different things like that. Because he says, I need to help let that energy out. He says, he says, let the energy out. And he says, he says, wow, you did like, I, I was really good and socialized as a puppy, like, let's continue some of that stuff we did as i was a puppy to get me out more because i feel too closed in so let's get me out more and get some of that energy working out is what rupert said rupert says will help like okay i need more activity and let's let's get me out more to get me doing some of those things that i used to do before and then kind of do like a ritual of like okay like you know shaking it off before he goes around maybe some other dog so you could do some like tapping with this like on the top of his head and just do like maybe like a fun tug game or something like that before you go out and he's around that extra stimuli so he says he's like let's just go like sit out and be with some people to help me again because he's like some of that that was there a lot before hasn't been there as much so he says he says he says that's part of the he says that's part of the disconnect and remind me that i don't have to, that to be like picking up everything because he's showing me he's so sensitive too he's like he's like i'm so sensitive so yes like tapping on his head so you can go like this or like this and then hold one hand on his chest you know just hold the one hand on his chest like i'm holding on the top of my head and then while you tap on his head that can help to release anxiety and give them some calm too i, like that. I, I hadn't thought of tapping for dogs and stuff yeah. Yeah, it's really good for them. And then he shows me, and it's funny because my nugget dog is sitting right here with me. And usually I have them away when I do this, but she's having me pet her. And it's interesting because I, I feel like there's a message from Rupert coming through as I pet her. So Rupert's like, just kind of had like, look at me and sit with me and be like, you're my special boy, my special boy. And he's showing me like a special thing for his collar too, like a new tag or something that like helps give him his like superpower strength too. He's like a new tag will help too and giving me some loves and pets and showing me and reminding me what a good boy I am. He says that will be really good too. So awesome. Rupert, yeah. I want pictures. I know me too. Yeah. And tapping it's, you know, it's, it's cool. Cause it's almost the same as it is for people, but it's not like on the different points, like it is for people, but it does help release. Right. Just like it does for us. Yeah, absolutely. It's really good. Yeah. So Jennifer says she gives CBD oil and he hasn't made, and he has major drugs. Thanks. We'll find him a little fort. I think it'd be great if there was a soundproof one, but even if there's just that little thing that he can go into, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that will help. Mika, um, she's been gone, it'll be three years in September, but she would like, she would try to dig into my neck when it was a certain sound that was brought on from the wind. She was okay with fire trucks. She was okay with 
storms. She was okay with um, any other loud noises, but there would be a clanging on my balcony that was pretty subtle, actually. Like I did, I heard it, but it wasn't anything. So it had to be the vibration for her. But like when that happened, she would literally, if she could have dug into my neck, she could not get closer. I'm like, okay, oh. one of us needs drugs. I don't know if it's you or me, but one right. of us needs drugs right now. Right? You're like, come on now. <laughs> um, and Karen says, thank you. That she completely understands. Um, I think, Amy, we answered that. How can I help Hooper? Patty, thank you. Um trying to see if I'm missing any questions. I think I, oh, oh we got one here. I know they come through, so it's like, wait, where is the question? No, right exactly. Ooh, I like this. So her German shepherds, um, let's see here. Oh, maybe um, it's not a question, just a comment, but. Yeah, well, and I love that because you know what, this is like a really cool comment and I love this. So I feel like, you know, that animal communication and that connection with our animals, right? It is all through that love too. And then it's also embracing their different personalities too, right? Because some, yeah. you know, pets do more better at like, you know, being around lots of people. Some, you know, want that one-on-one -on -one time. Some want their time by themselves. So like with my two dogs, Nugget is super, super like high energy, right? And she's just like happy, happy, happy. Where Coolip is more like grounded and kind of more stoic in some ways. So Coolip is like, okay, I just want to chill here. So sometimes I... We'll leave Cool Up and take Nugget for a nice long walk because it's too much for Cool Up. And then Nugget gets to have that time. So I think sometimes when we have multiple pets, like having that one on one time with them is important, right? And not to feel bad, like, oh, I'm leaving the other one out. Because it's just like with your friends, right? You don't want to go out with, like, you know, Amy, Jenny, and Patty all the time, right? Sometimes you maybe just want to spend some one on one time with Amy, right? Like, it's right. important to have, like, that that sacred connection time as well. And it's not discounting any of the other connections. It's just having that like separate moment, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think if I've missed somebody's question, please pop it back in there. Hi, Anna, good to have you here. Um, just added note, I'm a, oh yeah, I know this about you, Jennifer. She is a full-time pet nanny and I had the best job ever. I've had helped pets pass over and that was hard for me at the first, but now I understand why I'm with them when they pass, when mommy and daddy are done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and my brother's dog is always licking me. Why? Oh, Jennifer, you're a blessing. I just saw, like, as uh, before I get to Anna's question, uh, I just saw, like, all these pets just, like, all laying on top of you and, like, licking you and giving you love and, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And there's this big dog that's like a, um, like a newfoundland but not the black newfoundland one that's like the black and with black and white with you know the like it makes me look think of uh da daisy and uh herbie that uh, i follow them on facebook right there's so there's charlie the golden and then there's daisy the newfie and herbie the newfie so it makes me think of like a newfie like that there's this big dog that's like oh white okay like that so this big dog that's like hey 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 thank you i love you i love you i love you love you so that one is like hey 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 thank you thank you thank you and there's all these other ones so bless you jennifer that's amazing so um and and anna so anna you might not like the answer to this question so <laughs> what i get of why your brother's dog is always licking you is is because i know it like irritates you and i'm going to irritate you until you give me what you want until you give me what i want is what i get so i feel like the, what the dog is showing me is like yeah i do it just to irritate you and then you eventually like get into doing what i want you to do so that's that's what i get from your father's dog your brother's dog, dog is like yeah you listen to what i want i'm really good at getting what i want so <laughs> sorry about that anna <laughs> i know sorry yeah i'm like oh my gosh i'm like how do i say this it's just that's how that's how it comes sometimes right so is there a way because that sounds like a three-year-old kid who can say mom 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 and then mom finally gives in so how can anna stop the dog licking without warding rewarding the um unwanted behavior 
Oh, so this dog says, you know what I like, so just give me the, give me, and then the dog's like having me like rub the top of my head. So you know what I like, so just give me what it is that I want, and you know what that is. Like give me those those treats and those loves and that, and that like attention, because I love the attention that you give me. Uh, and this dog is saying that, you give me my, your br more attention than your brother does sometimes. Like the, this dog is saying like, you, you're you totally present with me and I really like that. So just the more you, I feel like you can acknowledge that and say, okay, I hear you. You know, we, you don't have to do that. Like you can show me in a different way, right? Yeah. You can show me in a different way. Awesome. Okay. I think we have gotten all of our questions answered. Ooh, for Jennifer was saying a great Pyrenees. Oh. That's like, I, I want to have a Great Pyrenees one day. I love Great Pyrenees, but it'll be a rescue for sure. A rescue Great Pyrenees. Nice. So um, thank you everyone for being here. Shauna also does a very quick freebie like this is on her own page on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time because she's on the West Coast. So you can go to Shauna Marie Fisher, um, her business page, and you'll be able to ask questions there. Or go to her website and schedule a more in-depth session with her because again these are just quick little tune-ins that she does and i'm grateful for them i don't have any pets right now but i promise you if and when i do you will be probably the first to know about it so i love it yay that's exciting i love that yay yes and my i had a little like couple weeks just in case people check on my page i had like a little oh, yeah. i little had a little hiatus on my sunday night but i will be back this sunday so i had like some things come up the last couple sundays but i'm going to be back this sunday so if anybody wants to, like wait a minute somebody has a birthday and they're giving a birthday special what is that yes 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 so my birthday is this weekend so my birthday is on saturday and i'm going to be 49 on Saturday and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like I'm going to be 49. So what I decided to do is all my 30 minute sessions, I decided to do for $49. So that's a 30 minute animal communication session they can do for $49. Um, I have the animal energy healing session that I did for $49. And then I have the um, animal wisdom oracle session where I pick some cards and tune into some animals in nature that are uh, that are helping you so that will be at $49 as well and I just put that on my scheduler today so I haven't like officially announced it until just now right now you guys are the yes. first to hear yes you guys are the first to hear and so I'm going to be sh and thank you for the birthday wishes so I'm going to be I'm um, sharing about that uh, later today and it actually like it's going on right now and I'm probably going to keep it like um through maybe like the middle of next week or maybe i'll just run it until like next thursday probably it'll probably maybe go for a full week and i might run it till the end of next week so but definitely probably through thursday what is next thursday i'm like let me look at my calendar but 18th maybe yeah the 18th yeah so i'll probably run run it through like the 18th is what i'm thinking because i always like to give people a little a little bit more a little bit more time and i'd like to give people the experience to do this just to yeah, yeah. And, and it's good because you don't exactly know when you're going to cut it off it sounds like for a week but i would encourage you to get on there and order yours sooner than later so you make sure you take advantage of this special discount that she's doing and you got lots of birthday wishes. Tina, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you oh, here. Yeah. If you have any, Tina has, um, well, she has two dogs and a duck. And I love Tina and her dogs and her duck. They're <laughs> the best. Oh, they my are goodness. the best. She's, she's one of my besties. So Tina, if you have a quick question before we um, close up shop, I do have one thing that I want to talk about that Shauna is going to sign up for. She's not aware of it yet, but she's going to sign up for it once we talk. So Tina, let me know if you have any questions what i'm going to bring up and i'm trying to remember to bring it up at the end of each of my facebook lives is september 9th through the 11th we are doing global free hugs again i've been doing it since 2008 two years off due to covid yes covid is still a thing so i want everyone in their areas to pay attention to the regulations in their communities but it's about going out and offering free hugs to people However, I've also added on because the whole point is to spread love through a hug. 
So if you're not comfortable hugging strangers, which by the way, when I started in 2008, I was terrified of it. Now it's normal for me, but it wasn't something that I was comfortable with at first. But if you're truly not comfortable doing that, I still encourage you to sign up and there's, I have a checkoff thing that it's going to be a private thing. So Shauna is going to sign up because she's going to send me pictures that day of her hugging her dogs or hugging friends or something like that. Um, in case, because uh, I have so many friends who are introverts. I cannot tell you how many friends that I have that are introverts. So she's going to share pictures of her hugging her dogs. The entire point is to love up this big, beautiful and messy world one hug at a time. So I encourage you all. I'm going to put it in here. Yay. Uh, how to sign up. So I expect to see a sign up from Shauna coming through. I love that. And, and I love that you're doing that. And I have to say, my dog Nugget loves to give hugs. She jumps up and gives me like a, a multiple hugs during the day. And like, I love that you're doing this because it's so fun. It's like we need to share that love with each other. Right? Yeah. Like so so you can, I would love it if you're willing to do it on a public street corner in your community and smile and say hello to people that you don't know and offer a hug. It is always, always, always. I do not use the word always lightly. I'm not a fan of the word, but it is always an invitation. You cannot insist or make somebody hug you. Um, I, I Sometimes I've gotten some very enthusiastic huggers who hugging is naturally to them. Yeah, so yeah. they make other people. I'm like, no, no, no. You, it, It's an invitation. You have a sign and you open your arms up, but you cannot insist upon it. So Exactly. And where do you do this, Carol? So like if somebody's interested, like, where is the best place, you know, for them to do that? Yeah, so the best place, like I live in Chicago. So I do it downtown in a public park where there's a lot of tourists and a lot of locals walking by. So where I do it, there is tons of opportunity for hugs. There's also, I would say, let's say I get 100 hugs that day. There's a 1,000 or 1,500 people who walk by without the hug. Um, a lot of people smile, a lot of people say thank you, and then there are people who just pretend I don't exist kind of thing. So you want it to be someplace public, um, and especially if we have anybody from out of the country, you could have serious ramifications if you do it on private property. Here in the U.S., you're probably just going to get kicked out, like this is private property, move on. So I pick a public park, and then I try to find something where there's going to be people walking by. Now, if you're nervous about it and don't want to have a lot of people for your first time, then pick some place that like maybe even go to a dog park and offer the hugs, you know, but it's really about um, what you're comfortable doing and knowing that there will be people who walk by that don't get hugs. The first time I did it, I picked it in January, not a bright idea in Chicago to do an outdoor event in January, but I did. And we did not get a lot of hugs because guess what? In January, there's not a lot of people outside. <laughs> we did get some and I had comments from people like they hadn't been hugged in weeks and things like that. So I realized how important it was for that physical touch. And I really believe that when people feel seen, heard and know they matter in this world, they're far less likely to harm themselves or others. So this is my contribution to adding a little bit more world peace in the world. So public event you can sign up for private event with your family friends pets you can sign up for um it's just you would email and say i'm going to do it on saturday or sunday you don't even have to know right now but i want you to then send me a picture to say you participated that weekend yay so. oh my gosh i love that and so many ideas of like going to a dog park i think our mentor sunny sunny dawn johnston i think i saw a picture of her doing it like at like an airport or something like that oh, she's she been involved um so i started in 2008 i think i met sunny in 2010 but she's been involved most every year since and so she's been on a cruise and did it on a cruise ship one time. So yeah. generally, I think right now she'll be at home in Arizona, but she signed up to do it. So Yay. you just, you want it to be a public place again in the U S most likely, I can't promise, but most likely if you're on a private property, you're just going to be asked to leave. But I, I remember one of the first years of the global hubs, I had a woman sign up from, can't think of the country right now. Um, but their laws are very, very strict. 
and she had told me that she hadn't gotten a permit to offer hugs and it takes like six weeks to get a permit. Oh. So, I, so I said, please do not hug. I don't want you getting arrested to offer that. So she still did it, but kind of hid her sign and pulled it out here and there and set pictures. Um, but again, oh. it's really important to follow the rules and regulations in your community. This event is not about getting huggers arrested. <laughs> it is about spreading love and kindness uh, one hug at a time. So I put the link in there. Singapore, yes, Tina, thank you. I was like, I knew I'd think, remember. Oh, and, I and she joined me several years after too. So, uh, but it is about knowing what is acceptable in your community and being safe for yourself that way too. Yeah. You've got to be safe, right? And I just have to pop in. I'm like, I don't want to interrupt the hug thing because, like, I think this is so cool. But, Tina, your duck keeps telling me, I want balls in my pool. I want balls in my pool. They're showing me, like, you know, the uh, the jumping uh, balls that people go into, like, the ball pits, right? I forget what they call those things at Chuck E. Cheese, right? You know, it's like the yeah, colored those, balls. Yeah, like plastic colorful balls. Yes. Like, I want, you know, I want some, like, I want some balls in my in my, uh, in my pool. So, so do that so there you go sorry that just that just kept coming to me but no I and, love and tina i am a friend with well i'm a friend with her in life too but we are friends on facebook so she can send me pictures of the balls in the pool i we expect to see them tina yes we expect to see them yes and then like you, you know i just had an idea for a sign for you carol for your hug thing what if you had like free hugs hug on right that could be like a new shirt for you hug on there you go i like that right now my shirts are hug dealer i'm a hug dealer but there you go i like yeah hug on right boop, boop, boop. so yeah go. so please consider signing up shauna i know you're gonna sign up um and i think right now i have huggers on three continents six countries and 14 u.s states I expected it to be a smaller amount because of COVID and just getting back into the swing of things. But I have had huggers on six continents. I should know these numbers right offhand. 45 countries and 32 states, I believe, over all the years that we've been doing this. So uh, they are all around her pool, the dog's tennis balls. I'll get her what she wants. Yeah, like, give me the pretty colored ones. She's like, those tennis balls are too heavy. Exactly. They're too heavy. She like wants lighter ones. And she's showing me ones that are like kind of ones that she can kind of, you know, like that have a little bit of flexibility too and all of that. So yeah, oh, she's okay. like, give me different kinds of ones. She's like, you can <laughs> find them. So she's so cute. Oh my goodness. I love her. Yeah. She, she is adorable and hysterical as well. And yes, um, Tina, definitely join, whether it's hugging your boys or coming downtown that weekend and joining me for hugs, whatever it is. Um, thank you so much, Shauna. I always love our Thursdays together. Me and too. again, it's shaunamariefisher.com. She has a special right now for a 30-minute reading for her birthday number of 49. And you can join her this Sunday, 9 p.m. Central Time, since I'm assuming most people here are Central Time, but not necessarily. 7 p.m. Pacific Time, where she's at. And she'll be doing these um, short little check-ins with your pets, too. So that's what i have for you today check on shauna's website sign up for hugs um, with me and have a wonderful rest of your day and remember you matter you matter to me you matter to the world and most 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 importantly you matter to you and your pets we'll talk soon and have a great rest of your week so long for now